Oh. Well, guys, I went out, uh, did a little job hunting today and stuff, and uh, <clears throat> the comic book shop in the town of Princeton, Virginia used to be called uh, Lost Legion, and it just gradually went downhill uh, to where I might have popped in there maybe once and maybe twice in the last year, you know, wasn't interested. And then uh, this thing started popping up on Facebook. Uh, this new comic book shop opened up. Turns out it's the same building under new management, and it's called uh, Crit Hit. Uh, boards and games and comics or something like that, like Critical Hit and D&D &D and stuff, but they're more into gaming. And I uh, walked in, they rearranged the whole store, looks really nice, uh, can't believe it's the same place, Looks, it's so much cleaner, smells so much better. And uh, they had a bunch of, you know, comic books on the rack, and I could tell they just got the stock that was left over. And I asked if they needed any back issues because I didn't see any, and they were like right around this little corner, I mean, they are literally in a hole in the wall, I, you know. And uh, short boxes, I asked the guy how much they were, he was real, gave me a real vague answer, I can kind of tell, I don't think he really knew. And uh, so I went for it, pulled out a few of them, and it turns out anything from 2011 back is a quarter. And what you see what I got. Uh, so, you know, I, I grabbed about 50 books and stuff, and I found a stack of quarters and went back tomorrow. As I go out to do run a few errands and stuff. So... Some of the first things I got, we'll do the Silver Age first. I got Silver Age books for a quarter, all right? And two of these are in phenomenal shape. Uh, Justice League of America, number 62. It is, uh, as you can see, I mean, the cover's a little bit scruffed up and everything. You know, it's a black border cover, so it was really hard to uh, take care of. And considering this book is something like 47 years old now, I think. Uh, it's from These are from 68. But to me, that's, that's one of those covers I've always seen, but I've never read this. So I was really happy to get that. And then this one's in phenomenal shape. Just this league number 65 with a pink cover and green letters. Uh, it, it works. It works. You know, that would, that would stand out on a rack. You know, the pink covers always kind of throw me off a little bit. I'm not used to seeing them. And then this is the one that I was just, you know, oh, so happy to get and stuff. Because I've seen this cover. And again, I'm, I, I've, I think I read the book when I was a kid or something like that. Uh, number 60, uh, 69, uh, where, you know, Green Arrow is accused of murder. And this thing, I went ahead and boarded it up, bagged it, it's, it's phenomenal. It is phenomenal, man. Even the pages are cream, creamy. It's got a little, uh, tear there, a little bend in the corner, and that's it. I mean, it's, that's phenomenal. Uh, and then we got 81. These are a little bit beat up, but, you know, for a quarter. And, uh, 88. I think Denny O'Neill would come on by now. And there's some people that argue that uh, the Silver Age didn't end in 73. It ended in 1968 when Snapper Carr ended up being a traitor to the Justice League that Denny O'Neill wrote. So there's some, I've run across some old time collectors, man, the old, old school, who are still angry and never let it go. And then I got this. I didn't know this series even came out in the 60s. But, I mean, I knew DC had got, had got him, and I didn't think he really popped up until the 70s. In adventure comics, but it turns out you know Plastic Man had a little run, uh, and this is number nine. You know if I'd done a little digging, but what's interesting is the uh, his outfit. Uh, he doesn't have the bare legs. They gave him some black shorts and some full body red tights there, and the art in this is really uh, more like a comic strip than uh, you know. It kind of harkens back to. It reminds me of uh, Jack Davis and stuff from uh, EC Comics in the fifties course it's not him you know uh, they even have some femme fatales in here and gangsters you know some beehive haircuts and stuff and I love the advertisements in these old Silver Age books man the coming of the creeper you know they only know Steve Ditko does it again and they're letting you know when he was coming so uh, let me see I don't see any credits and we got a lot of books to get through now, what's what's wild is that I can't remember when it ended, but I think it started around 61 or 62. They had an Aquaman book. And this is a Nick Cardi cover. Uh, Steve Skeets was writing this. Steve Skeets would uh, start uh, writing Namor over at DC. And uh, I mentioned before in another one, but I've always been fascinated. Towards the end of this run of Aquaman, Steve Skeets did not get to finish a story. So when he got a hold of Namor over at Marvel, he used that last issue to complete the Aquaman story that he had started at DC years earlier, you know, in a, in a Marvel book. 
you know, little thing there. Now this, I swear this is reprints in those little adventure digests that came out in the early 80s and stuff. And I love this story. This is like a three-part story. But uh, it turns out I've got the original issue now. But, you know, as this thing is crisp, clean, glossy. It still has creamy colored pages and stuff. But somebody, and it's not going to show up, but there's pink around there where somebody took some kind of uh, finger paint or something. And the art for this thing from 1970, Steve Skeets and Jim Afro art, this thing is beautiful. This is a beautiful story. What happens is that to get the story going on, uh, Aquaman and Aqualad return to Atlantis. And uh, Ocean Master apparently remembers who he is and remembers that uh, Aquaman is his brother. But there's these aliens that come down. And with Mira meeting them and stuff, these aliens shoot at him. You know, it's down here in this bottom panel. Everything goes black, and then he wakes. He's awakening in this strange world, and gets attacked by a giant amoeba. Uh, he starts floating around, finds out his telepathy doesn't work, and this woman meets him, and uh, he ends up uh, finding this city. Now, I love this man. The city on the edge of nowhere. You, know, you tell me that's not a. a C. Skeets wasn't a Star Trek fan, and I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. After like three issues and stuff. You end up finding out that uh, he was shrunk by the aliens, and he's in a complete micro world that's in Mira's his wife's ring. Uh, kind of reminds me of the Hulk when he got shrunk down and met Jarella and stuff, you know. Okay, so that's it with these Silver Age books, and then I found these. I went ahead and grabbed these. I think I'm gonna start grabbing these. There's some more, but they were they were all pretty beat up, man. Got some GI Joe number 55, the unmasking. I remember seeing that on the uh, newsstand on the spinner racks back in the day in like 86, 87 when this came out and they had everybody unmasking you know and I was like oh maybe I should get that and of course I didn't then there's a roadblock my least favorite um, <laughs> G.I. Joe's I mean I know there's a worse uh, number 57 and I was happy to get this because I have a copy of it but this is an upgrade uh, number 53 with the 25th anniversary of Marvel border on it those are I'm collecting okay then I got these, and these are just go straight on eBay, man. I now have another Deadpool lot to put on there uh, with some other books, so I'm glad I procrastinated my eBay. But uh, here's uh, Deadpool Max uh, 2, the sequel, I guess. David Latham, Kyle Baker. Yeah, a few issues of that. Uh, the first one, 11 and 12 of the first run of Deadpool Max. And a Deadpool Max 2, yeah, yeah it's another part 2. I think that's number 1. Yeah, it's number one. I think I have another number one. Number 11, anyway. And then I got the Max Christmas Special. You know, so, got that. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to jump around and stuff, but one of the cool things about that, uh, I loved about that uh, Aquaman book, and yeah, I'm getting excited about a, a Silver Age Aquaman book, was that there was a little page there that did something very cool. Jim Epper, the artist in it, um, there's two things about this I need to back up and tell you about. But as, as he's swimming through this fluid that he's not sure what it is in this other world, I don't know if it's going to show up, but those uh, squiggly little uh, pink lines stuff that are in there, if you look really close, they spell out the names of all the people that worked at the DC back then. It's got Apro in there, Giordano, Orlando, Neil Adams, uh, Cardi, uh, Robbins, Brown, you know, Mortimer. You know, so, you know, a little homage there. Now, what is really cool about this book, which I did not know was going on, is that Neil Adams wrote and drew a backup Dead Man story where he messes with the aliens in Ocean Master. That runs parallel with this story. I never knew that. So there's some Dead Man in here by Neil Adams. You know, go figure. All right, and then I ended up getting 33 issues of The Boys, and I think I'm going to go back tomorrow and... and uh, get Highlander, Huey, and uh, three issues of Butcher Story, the Butcher, Baker, Candlestick Maker miniseries, and number 39 of this. So I got the boys. Now I got a lot of these in trade, but uh, I checked, and I think after this, this gives me 52 issues of a 70, 72 issue run of the boys. It's a complete story. 70, this, this whole series ran for 72 issues. So I need 20 or less, so I might as well go ahead and get them. And plus I have a lot of them in trade. I was always planning on getting this series just in trade. Now the boys, this is where Garth Ennis, the boys <laughs> are a CIA, CIA a group of people with, with powers who keep heroes in check because they're celebrity and drug use. 
has gone to their head and they don't come off very well in this okay so they all dress in black you know but uh, here's the butcher he leads the team and this is the female she doesn't speak and she freaking kills people in horrible ways yeah so there's that was 25 I think and here's 27 and I think yeah we gotta go this is the uh, arc uh, where good Scar Thetis's take on the X-Men and uh, he, you know Huey, who looks like Simon Pegg, and Simon Pegg has done a forward for one of the trades where this is Simon Pegg, even though his name's Huey, uh, infiltrates the G-Men, who's more or less the X-Men. You find out that there was like a lot of um, pedophile stuff going on. You know, I mean, he he puts a really I, I don't want to talk about it too much because he puts a horrible twist on everything, and I, I, it's kind of funny. It's got humor in it and stuff, man. But when you talk about it out loud, you're just going to come off. It's a guilty pleasure book. Let me tell you that. But here's a Jim Lee. And this was cool about Jim Lee doing the cover for issue 30. I think this is, this is the variant cover. Was that this issue, this story started out at Wildstorm while it was an imprint at DC around 2006 maybe. They did six issues and it was too much. And they said it was because of the tone that Garthinus used with the superheroes that was kind of like what I was talking about but I think it had something to do with that last issue they published being you know that they had a group that was more or less the Teen Titans and one of them went down and a hamster crawled out of his ass and Huey ends up taking the hamster and you know he's horrified of what this hamster's gone through anyway they went to Dynamite and DC did everything they could to like here's the rights uh, find somebody else to publish it. We're gonna give you a hard time. And Derek Robertson was contracted at DC at the time as an exclusive artist, and they went ahead and made amends and amendments or something to his contract so he could work at Dynamite when they published it to keep the book going. So Jim Lee started Wildstorm and it turns around and does a cover for him. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, 32. Now I'm not going to talk about the story arcs because I have these in trade and I don't want to be wrong. Yes, that is a Captain America version, you know, a version of Captain America pissing his pants. Yeah. I love this book, this cover. This is a uh, riff on All-Star Superman number one where Superman's sitting on the cloud and smiling at you. And then we have, you know, in the boys, we have this guy, you know, <laughs> sitting on a big puff of smoke while he watches the city burn that he probably burnt down looking at us smiling. Alright, and then these were origin stories, to, you know, to help Huey out. Huey's got a soul and stuff. He, he, was, he was brought in by the butcher, even though he wasn't trained. He's just an Irish guy, you know. These are origin stories of the female. I think the female was just given to a lab or something. Uh, a little bit more. This is uh, Homelander, the version of Superman. and Turns out he's just a sadistic guy. He likes burning people and eating them and stuff. I mean, I'm being nice saying it that way. 41, now we're in uncharted territory. I'm pretty sure I've read uh, 41 to like 48, but I'm not going to say too much. And these pictures tell a different story, okay? She looks like she's crying and stuff. Turns out Huey is dating her, and then to get into their version of the Justice League, she ended up doing a circle jerk, and this is her crying, and they recorded it and sent it to Huey after they found out these two were dating. They didn't know that each other... She, he didn't know she was a superhero, and she didn't know that Huey was a member of the boys, and everybody else found out. And this is what I mean, man. This is kind of touchy on some of these. Number uh, 44. Never read this. Okay. Uh, for 51 now. I don't know. Now we're, like, in the last, you know, getting down to the nitty-gritty and stuff. Um, he walks in, and he always tells this lady off who runs the CIA or something like that. And he always ends up having anal sex with her, and while she's cussing him, telling him what a bastard he is. Uh, looks like we have their version of, I don't know if it's Silver Age Heroes or what it's supposed to be. I mean, that's Captain, you know, when you read this, you start, you know who the archetypes are, but, you know, you don't want to go too far because he mixes them up. This could be like Silver Age Avengers meets the JSA for all you know, you don't know, but you get in there and you see where they're going at it. Yeah, and then they die horrible, horrible, horrible deaths. You know, he's getting squashed. And that's probably a riff on Spider-Man 33 or whatever it was where he's trapped underneath the uh, gigantic piece of metal and the water's coming down on him. And he thinks about, I have to get this medicine to Aunt May and rip it off of me and stuff like that. So, you know, even if that's not in the story. Now, I'm real curious if this is a World War II story because Garth Ennis writes some fantastic war stories, man. This guy could bring back the war stories and stuff that I've read. 
Um, yeah, here we go. Getting to the, you can see the butcher there, and that's probably not everybody being scared and stuff like that. Those two monkeys are probably screwing him in the ears, and he's terrified. I haven't read this, but I, you know, I know Garthenus enough to know, you know, you have to look twice at things. You know, that's probably how they got this cover on the stands. They, everybody just looks scared. They're probably screwing him in the ear, you know. And don't look too hard on this because I've heard of this story arc. That's their version of uh, Martian Manhunter, more or less. And those are probably transgender men or chicks with penises. You know, you can finish that if you want. So, yeah, don't think he's a lucky man there, but yeah. And this dog, oh my god. Oh, uh, that's the butcher's dog. He's awesome. Okay. Looks like it's a bear or a wolverine or something. Number 60. And then I heard about the, looks like there's a full-on assault with the heroes, you know, they've had enough. And I think this series takes place within two years of their time, because I keep referencing uh, two, 2001, the tower's coming down. And uh, they reference it enough to where you get the idea that it was just like five or six years ago that this happened, the way they keep talking. Uh, because basically what happens is that these heroes who are supposed to be the Justice League really messed up. They panicked. They didn't work well as a team. Some other things happened. And one tower came down. One survived. But it, the other plane went into the bridge. One of the bridges is down. You know, probably, you know in New York. Alright. 63. I mean, this is looking real interesting. Every now and then, you know, he gets, he gets a little bit of a serious tone. You know, he, he balances out the... Uh, the, the violence and sex and all the work, work stuff he does with a little bit of humor, you know, even if it's sophomoric. But then all of a sudden, Garthenus will give you a straightforward, horrific story, you know, no no jokes intended. I think this is a variant cover. Um, number ooh, 66. Now, <clears throat> the thing about this cover that I noticed was um, once you realize who this guy is, you know, Turns out comic books are nothing but propaganda for the heroes, okay? Their comic books like in the Silver Age were like our books in the Silver Age and everything they do is to shape how people view the heroes even though they're a bunch of decadent uh, sociopaths and stuff like that. And this was the guy, he would, he would be a combination of like Stan Lee and Jack Kirby put together and it was this is in his younger days. And after all the story arcs they've had and all the art type of heroes that come out, they've all had their books rejected and stuff. You know, so it's kind of fun. You know, this is its own little world, and you can start finding little Easter eggs and how it ties in. And then we're winding down, winding down. And I've already heard about how this kind of ends, and it's not well. 66 and 70. And where it's a Garthenus book, you know, it looks like he might be drowning in milk and, or sand or glue or something. But I know it's going to be something really bad, you know, kind of gross you out and stuff where it's Garthenus. All right, well, that was my, those, all those books were a quarter apiece, and thanks for hanging in there, man.